often we say that a building will not erect when the structure that makes it up is puny and frail, that a debilitated and weak construction leads to a massive ruination when a calamity or catastrophe occurs, or worse, a destruction caused by none other than its fragile self. This is of course a very apparent circumstance in the peculiar world of politics. Yes, the very crucial persons of the country, as one might tend to think, are the ones who create the chaos themselves. Well, some might say that they do not have the intention to do that. It's just how they are. They are innate. I sort of favor that opinion in some ways. Why? Because they really are the consumed by their own greed, selfishness, pride, and ego that they can no longer change themselves and that they are becoming blind on how they subconsciously and pathetically impact the nation that they lead. So what do we do now? Knowing that the people who run our nation are horribly and tremendously turning into an abominable monstrosity. Knowing that they are no longer children whom we could still inspire and encourage. What shall we do? Our voices, the voices that we have, are one of the most powerful tools that shake and galvanize the heads of the people above. We must conjoin to share our ideas and voices together in order to create a loud noise, thereby creating the impact that we desire to share with them. We must use our voices in educating our fellow countrymen so we can gather more people to share our ideas with and to enlighten them, thus making us powerful and more impactful as a nation. The second thing is choose wisely. It is very important to note that one must have the stamina in order to lead the nation. Not a feeble individual who only relies on his wealth and fame to boost this brand and to win the votes of the people. One must have the correct mixture of substances needed in order to create a stable and sturdy structure. However, we must remind ourselves that those substances or the essential qualities also depend on us, the engineers that create the nation. We must remind ourselves that we are the pioneers, the engineers, the supremes, the superiors, the people who demand for change, the nation. Without us, we wouldn't be a nation at all. We should not let the feeble people above to overpower and belittle us. Because we are the people, the people that demand change, justice, and assurance from the government. This we do not just for ourselves, but for our fellow people, for those who are profoundly in need, for those who suffer from poverty, for the nation. We are the engineers because we have the ability to choose the right mixture that makes the structure as sturdy as possible. We are the voters. We must elect the appropriate and apt person who could strengthen the system, making it fair and just. We must not let the flimsies to prevail. Hence, we must acquire the idea of discerning what is right and what's not. Which leads us to the third point, educate. As the people who have the right to choose a leader, we should educate ourselves and others as well. Educating oneself by means of interacting to another person who shares the same idea, or researching and further studying the idea. Gather your fellows and educate one another. In this way, you could cultivate yourself and others as well. There will be a large and much more enormous voice and power that could create the change. And most importantly, educate the children. Teach them to discern the right from the wrong, for they are the future and the hope of the nation. They are the seeds that will soon grow. And finally, keep the flame burning. As Seneca once wrote, 
there has been no great wisdom without an element of madness. Keep on fighting for our rights. If you'll have to criticize the government in order to create a stable and sturdy system, then go. Keep the fire in your hearts and fight the underqualified politicians. Fight for the fairer justice system and do it for the children.